I'm back with my series of a step-by-step -step restoration of the Singer Model 337. I wanted to reinstall, reassemble and reinstall the light fixture. Uh, previously I had installed all the wiring, the motor, the switch and got the wiring ready. But when I get out, when I got over here to do it, I realized I didn't quite have enough slack. So I had to uh, take the washer off of the switch and push the switch back, back inside and move it up here to get some extra wire. But I'm, I'm there now and you, you start out with this uh, Bakelite or plastic assembly and you tuck the, tuck the two wires in. You remember we cleaned up the contacts on it. So the this part of the bracket has a divider in there and some slots where you you plug these in and uh, what what comes next here is we need to put the back part on and we'll do that we can see here there's a space in the back to lay that wire into and then the bracket kind of uh, snaps back together. And let's see if I can get a get my little headlamp here to show you how those contacts look inside. Because you want to make sure that those uh, contact pins for the light bulb are in place and that they're not. Uh, touching or bent or anything like that. So you got to make contact with those with the light bulb when you stick it in. So they they look they look pretty good to me. Let me let me check this one. I'll put my little screwdriver in there and just just to make sure that they're both in the right place and they're tight equal distance apart. You can see them pretty good there. So, uh, when you get these uh, back together here, get the cord lined up. I think I don't have the cord quite in enough, so let me see if I can get it in there a little bit more before I close this. That's a better, tighter fit now. I still look lined up in here. Now I've got to put this part back in the metal bracket. And there's a flange here that goes into this slot above the what I call the spring hinge. So it comes over the top like that and the flange is going to fit right in here on the metal bracket. So that keeps that part in. Lines up like this. There's screw holes in the back of the metal bracket to hold these screws. So while you squeeze it together I'm going to put these two screws back in from the front above where the bulb goes into. What I'm fine with these is that you really, because it compresses the cord there, you really have to uh, squeeze really hard to get that screw started. And uh, once once you do, then you're good. Well, let's just uh, let's see if we're still got our contacts in there. That looks great. I wonder if I have a light bulb around here. I thought maybe I'd stick it in and see if it catches properly before I finish up. So 
This model has the bayonet type that you push in and then do a little twist. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to be fine there. So I'll go ahead and tighten this up here. And that'll finish compressing the cord. Do a few turns, try and do it equal. At this point, I don't want anything to break. I don't know, the plastic feels really good, um, but it can get brittle. I'm sure the polymer type plastics or whatever they are nowadays are probably superior. Just the way the Newer plastics were superior to the old Bakelite. Okay. Phew. That's always a, a project for me. Now what I've got to do is get that up inside there and get that uh, spring hinge is going to lay across here underneath the stitch width lever and then the screw that holds it in is right down there so this manipulates a little bit but the metal L bracket does not and that's kinda what I find to be the, the headache so what I've tried to do in the past is get that up there. Let's see if I can go on the other side. I'm usually having the machine face me. If I can get that hinge started up in there and then hold it while I put the rest of the light in because it's got to stay under the stitch width lever to go in there and that's that's usually the hard part there okay so right now it's underneath the lever and it's rubbing on it but when you finish up it it will not be doing that when you put the screw in and tighten it down so let's get the light fixture the way it would be. You can see I got a lot of extra slack up here now, but I'll work that back down so I can reinstall the switch. I don't know if I'll be able to show you that where that screw is in there. Mm. Put this without bending anything more yeah it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be too too crowded in there but I I can see I've got to manipulate that bracket a little bit so the cutout in the the hinge spring hinge thing goes over manipulate it over the hole in the frame of the body so that I can put the little screw in and uh, from up above with, with some light on it it's not that bad to do if I can find a I think I've got the screw in my electric bag here. Let me see. Let me put it in here. Here it is. I think way back to one of my early videos when I was taking the wiring out. That's the little silver screw that goes through that spring hinge and into the body and then the light brackets all in place and 
make sure that my that's not quite a good enough Phillips that's worse yep that's the one okay bear with me here while I manipulate these things around here. Well, I've got the, the bracket now. It's lined right up. Uh, yep, that's got to be almost like stitch width one. I can keep the cord out of the way. Yeah, good time for a magnetic screwdriver, right? <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can get in there and Nope. Yep. Can't put the screw in if you can't hold on. Hey, I wonder if I could use that to get the screw lined up in the hole, maybe. bracket moved a little bit. I mentioned on a comment on one of the videos to a, a viewer that she really loved how clean and the process of doing this but she was nervous about you know taking all these parts off and putting everything back together and she's thinking about trying it but probably after she sees this video and and the uh, others that I fumbled around with she'll probably say no way am I going to all that hassle so I think I got the screw started by putting it on the end of my little magnet thing there um, I told her in the comment that on, on one of the 603s that I've done, I, I dropped this uh, light down, took out the screw and dropped it down, and pushed the switch in and took the motor out, and I wrapped all those pieces in like Ziplocs and plastic bags and rubber bands and zip ties to waterproof them, and then I did the same cleaning treatment. And it actually... Uh, worked pretty it, it worked well um, I couldn't do as much polishing of the pieces while they're in the machine but the machine came out really nice and uh, I, I put it up on Craigslist and sold it the first weekend for my asking price and uh, the buyer came and said what what caught her eye on the ad was how clean everything was. So um, you don't have to strip down the machine as much as I do. If you, you know, if you're just trying to get all the grease and everything off. Uh, later on the front end, I'll show you how I kind of I can use that sandpaper I used on the motor to clean the needle bars and even these top bars without taking them out but I have that finally in place and I am thrilled to be done with that Let's see if this drops down like normal yep yay hey hey okay so now I, I need to uh, redress up these wires there's a, there's a screw and a clamp right there. So I need to get that over and clamp it at the right spot so that there's slack in the wire to drop this down a little bit. But not too much slack that like right now it would rub all over the main shaft. So I need to dress the wires all the way up, get the switch back out and installed. 
but but then I'm completed with the uh, electrical. You can see I got the switch out there to get some slack from it. So when I do that, that'll finish up the electrical, and uh, I can start putting these uh, brackets here and. I should be able to put that little cover plate here and I can start rebuilding the whole uh, bobbin area and so forth. And then it'll go pretty, pretty quick. So, <clears throat> thanks for watching this part about finishing up the light fixture and the wiring. And we'll uh, catch you the next one. I think maybe I'll do the the whole bobbin area. I want to test the bobbin hook, see if it's got any burrs or anything, and then I'll uh, have to test the hook timing and make sure that that's good. Uh, if it's not, I'm going to have to do work underneath. If the timing's good, then we can just start reassembling it. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching.